After the recent shocking events in Tunisia, many have been praying for those who lost their lives and the families and friends they left behind. Ten years ago this week, similar prayers were said after the terrorist attacks of 7-7. So today on Songs of Praise, we meet two individuals whose faith has sustained them as their lives were changed forever on that tragic day. Whether it be a war, a terrorist attack, anything at all, I don't think they should be allowed to die alone. Hey, come on. Let's stop, please. Let's not do this to each other. He's tearing everybody apart. Over in Belfast, we meet the cathedral choir that's taken to the road in its bid to get new members on board. And Pam's in Bristol to visit one of the many churches all over the country, hosting some special missionaries from one of the biggest churches in the world. And amongst the inspiring hymns and songs today, there's a performance from the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra. We'll also be launching the next School Choir of the Year competition. But first, from Liverpool, a beautiful hymn of hope. This Tuesday marks the 10th anniversary of 7-7, when four suicide bombers attacked central London, killing 52 people and injuring hundreds more. It's been described as Britain's 9-11. The underground system was the main target. At least five stations were hit. The entire system is at a standstill. One man who was travelling on the underground through Edgware Road was teacher Tim Coulson. He had to smash the window of his carriage to get to the passengers on the bombed out train. His bravery led to Tim being awarded an MBE. But a decade on from the tragedy, the memories of that day remain vivid. If I can take you back to 7 7 in 2005, Tim, that awful day, what was it made you decide to stay and help? 
two things really. One was that my self-belief as I became aware of it was that I could actually offer some help and also um, a growing perception that perhaps God had a purpose for me that day and that was that purpose. What were your memories whenever the explosion happened? I think it was about my own safety. What on earth could it have been? I remember checking my arms and legs that I had them. But I became aware then of passengers in my own carriage that were not injured. The explosion happened outside of the carriage. It was a small tannoy announcement that asked if people with first aid experience could move towards the rear of the train. And I came across uh, a man I know to be Stan uh, now, that took some time to find out who he was, who was half in and half out of the carriage floor, very badly damaged by uh, the explosion. He died shortly after in my arms and I lowered him to the track. And I closed his eyes and said a prayer. I, I will always I will always have the most enormous respect for being allowed to be there when, at the moment he died. Because I've always believed for a very, very long time in my life that no one should die alone, no matter who they are, what their circumstances, whether it be a war, a terrorist attack, anything at all, I don't think they should be allowed to die alone, if it's at all possible. Tim also came to the aid of a severely injured woman called Alison. I faced her away from that hostility and the carnage because whatever she'd been through, she didn't need to see that. And after a period of time, which I now know to be uh, about an hour and a half underground, a light came um, and the paramedic was 24. She stood and burst into tears and knelt on the floor. And I said, well, you've got a bag with things in, we've got nothing and uh, that was enough to switch off those tears. Almost immediately, she jolted herself back into the role she could perform. So very soon after that, we were able to build the scoop stretcher between us and carry her out of there. Are you still in touch? Yes, we are. And how special is that relationship? Immensely special. Difficult to uh, choose a level to explain that. Following that, absolutely tragic, horrendous day. Was your faith rocked at any point? Mine wasn't that day. It was a challenge to take it on, but I'm absolutely convinced of God's purpose for me that day. From Bradford to Belfast, cathedral choirs are a key part of worship right across the UK. 
So when the number of choristers dwindled at St Anne's Cathedral, their music department was faced with a serious challenge. Find fresh new voices, or perhaps lose the choral tradition forever. The Senior Girls Choir of St Anne's Cathedral has come a long way. Today they are taking part in the Choral Evensong service, something that would have been impossible three years ago. Back in 2012, decreasing choir numbers forced the cathedral to consider new ways to reconnect with the wider community. They took a chance and offered free singing lessons to several inner city primary schools that had no previous connections with the cathedral. By working closely with the schools, they hoped to find the new members they so desperately needed. Two new buses were bought and the cathedral music tutors find themselves doubling up as minibus drivers. I would say driving the bus is the most stressful part of my job. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm a natural minibus driver, although I've adapted 